Good morning, and uh, finally around to episode 15 here. Um, like I was talking about in the summertime, um, I'm going to spend most of the fall uh, hunting. I got a little distracted and went uh, went away to get some warm weather and so on. And uh, So I'm back for the later part of the season, and i uh, been hunting in a local area, um, relatively safe for me. I'm new to hunting, so um, you know it's amazing how you can get turned around, especially when you're going off... Uh, um, into the bush and going relatively deep, uh, even in an area that you know well, um, you can get turned around. We, uh, Rob and I were uh, hunting on the weekend, and uh, we're in an area we both know. In fact, we're uh, cutting trail for uh, a new horse trail to bring us up in the ash loop. And uh, as we're going through the trail, we came upon a river, um, and it happened to me the day before. I'm looking at the river and uh, our stream and uh, there's three streams that run through the uh, the property and we're trying to hook up to uh, one of the other trails we started from the other side. And uh, you know we're in there for a couple of hours and we're circling back. And, uh, the first time I came upon it I was like that is so strange. Look at that river. It's running up river or this is one river or one area of the terrain that slopes back towards the mountain. Uh, I remember feeling perplexed, and this has got to be wrong, but all my senses were telling me that, in fact, this river was running upstream. Um, as I thought about it that night, and uh, and realized it then, but uh, after further reflection, it was amazing to <laughs> realize how, how turned around I was. Um, and even in uh, relatively... Uh, open areas that you may be familiar with, uh, Jesus, you can get turned around really easy. I'm back in the area, roughly the same area. Um, we've seen lots of elk. Uh, we got flanked by a wolf uh, the other day. Uh, we are making some deer calls and so on, and a uh, and, uh, wolf came in. Uh, we don't know if he was with the pack or if he's one of the lone wolves, um, but he came right up uh, within 50 yards anyhow of us. Um, we didn't shoot it. Uh, we both thought about it. Uh, uh, but we decided not to. Um. Sounds good. That's like the shoulder plate right there, right? Yeah. The uh, wolf population here is uh, in the Squamish Valley has exploded because of the elk. And uh, I'm in uh, one of the splinter herd uh, um, elk territories. Um, there's probably uh, six to a dozen in here. Uh, just down the road, about 30k from here, there's about 100 in the main herd. And uh, so, it's gotten frosty, uh, cold over the last few days, and I'm in here and uh, got a late start and walking through and with the cold leaves. Um, as you can hear, uh, it's not easy to walk around too quietly here. So, um, I've stopped off here. Um, this is uh, probably a elk bedding area. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, let's see, right in there. Uh, let's see, when does that show up? Uh, right in there, you can see them bedding over and uh, are bedding down there. Um, same with the bit behind me. Um, could have been from last night or the night before. Uh, I think the the best idea for this area now that it's gotten cold uh, is to camp overnight and find uh, find a spot that you just want to sit quiet in and uh, uh, maybe put in a, uh, uh, a tree stand or something over the next few days and get up in there and uh, wait for them. We saw some signs of deer, um, a lot of elk, uh, and I've heard different things that elk... Um, uh, scare away the deer because they're competing for resources. Um, and I've heard that uh, 
where the elk are, the deer are. Um, they cohabitate. Uh, so I don't know which is true, but uh, here we are. So I'm going to walk in a bit. Um, there's an area that we saw a lot of uh, uh, elk carcasses or uh, uh, skeletons, uh, probably taken down by wolves. Um, there's also about 30k from here, 20k from here. We came across some really big uh, grizzly tracks. Uh, just judging by the sound, the look of it, uh, it had to be <laughs> had to be 800 to 900 pounds. It was massive. Um, so there's grizzlies in here, in here. There's wolves in here. Um, as you can tell in these trees, uh, especially as I get in further, um, it's cougar territory and uh, hunting out here alone, so uh, it's interesting. Uh, so, we didn't go uh, more than uh, 30 feet, and uh, you can see what's behind me is, uh, this is a huge bedding area for quite a few elk. Now, you know, why are old growth so important? Because it's under these uh, old growth trees that uh, provide some protection um, and uh, some bedding areas for the elk and the deer. And when they're gone, um, the deer go and the elk go. Uh, definitely in less and lesser numbers. This area is so populated because there's quite a bit of forest forage um, food source for them in here and uh, also uh, uh, a relatively uh, good location because of the uh, number of older trees here. Uh, still quite a bit of old growth in here. Um, there's some massive, massive trees they took out here during the day. Uh, I'll show you those a little later. But you can see, I don't know in the background, you can see one of our tags in the horse trail. Um, that when it's newer um, growth trees, uh, you just don't have a coverage. Like if you look down here, there's it's all green, it's lush still, um, and it circles the base of the tree uh, about 10 meters, um, 10 meters in diameter, I guess. Uh, whereas if you look at young growth, it's all frosty and frozen. So, as you can see, yeah, it's hard to see, there you go, uh, more wolf tracks. Uh, you can see they go out right here, and then they go up that way, into where the elk are bedding down. There you go. So my thoughts here in the ending is, uh, you know, when we uh, when we cut down these old growth forests, um, it's like we're bulldozing an entire neighborhood of of beautiful homes and mansions in a well established uh, um, district, and replacing it with housing projects. And we know how housing projects turn out. Some are better than others, um, but there will never be. Uh, It'll never be the same community again. And, uh, you know, when you look at these old growths, um, right away, uh, when you're walking through the second cut and going into the old growth, and by old growth, I only mean that uh, they left some old growth standing enough that, uh, you know, you still have a feeling of the lushness that uh, used to be there. Um, it feels like home compared to the crap you're walking through. Um, I was walking through earlier. Um, which is more barren, it's, uh, it's desolate, um, and it's cold. And as soon as you go into the uh, old growth, um, it's lush and it's warm. And it just feels, this is where I, this is where I want to be. Um, this feels like home. And, uh, you know, it, it seems to be one of those areas um, in the forest that uh, is alive and flourishing even through fall and winter. Uh, while every, everything else is dying off, um, you go into these old growth and it, it's still lush. Um, so we're losing that. 
And I think the best way for us to preserve it is by experiencing it. If information was the uh, answer, we'd all be billionaires with six packs. But, um, you know, information is rarely the answer. It's part of the answer. But uh, the experience uh, is more important than the information. For me, being a, getting into hunting um, and just being quiet in the forest and not doing anything um, really changes your perspective and really, you, for me today, I had a sense that this is a lush, gorgeous home and compared to the barren housing project across the way. So, um, you know, when we experience it, uh, we're more likely to protect it. Um, and information alone, um, uh, from what we read and what we understand or what we learn, uh, isn't enough. Um, you have to get out there, it doesn't matter. Uh, what it be. Um, but for me, uh, moving away from sports activities where I'm uh, either doing something in the forest, hiking, biking, or skiing, um, to just sitting in the forest for prolonged periods of time, uh, it, it does something to you. It definitely um, helps, uh, helps your body return to homeostasis and you get a different perspective, perhaps, on life. Or at least I do. Anyhow, uh, unless you're out there, I don't think we're going to save it. Um, so get out there. Until next time, bye for now.